More gray matter. Oh yeah. Hey. Shh. I think we got a problem here. <laughs> uh, that's that's just nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're gonna have to fix that. Oh yeah. It's a little bit gray. Woo, got some moisture in there too. Coker stopped by and said, yeah, I think you got a little bit of emulsification issues in here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's um that's not good. Not good. Let me see any evidence there. <laughs> Man, that is that's JB Weld Gray. That's not good. So in between putting the red one on and the black one on, you have to come over here. You gotta flip your chicken. Okay? This is all part of the process. Trust and believe, folks. Trust and believe. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yes, there we are. Excellent. And then once that's back to cooking, then you can put the other o ring in. Yes, this is part of the process. Oh, <laughs> forgot to do this. Quick comparison. Here's the old gasket, and this is the new one. <laughs> Think there was a problem? <laughs> it's around 97, so I need to use a newer gasket. Now, I'm, I'm peeved right now at the dealership. This is what sometimes happen, and I'm human, and I should have known that gasket didn't fit. I, I should have known better. I should have paid much more attention to it. I'm, I'll, I'll keep this in here, guys. I'll keep this honest for you. Um, I goofed up. Parts guy kind of goofed up. So There we go. There we go. All right. What lies behind door number one? Hey, I'm in my shop. I am in my shop, sir. Sir. I'm in my shop. Just. Minding my own business, making sh stupid YouTube videos that no one will ever watch. Okay? Everything's alright. Hello, everyone. You guys said you wanted more tractor content, and unfortunately, I do have more. <laughs> Unfortunate for my uh, customer, not for you guys, but I did tell him we'll make some YouTube content out of it. John Deere 1050 here. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, 1987 model, uh, made in 87. He's got some big problems with this, or at least something really sinister has gone wrong with it. And it needs to be fixed right away. So, old yeller, you're going to have to sit for a few more minutes. <laughs> I just barely got him squeezed in here. Best case scenario, it's just a blown head gasket. Which I'm really hoping that's what it is. If it's not a blown head gasket, then hopefully maybe the cylinder head is simply cracked. I really hope that the liners, this is a wet sleeve liner diesel engine. I'm really hoping that that is not, um, the liners are not busted out because if so, that's a major overhaul. We can probably do an end frame on this thing. But that's a lot of messing about, and <laughs> and this customer needs it going for uh, chores that he does. So I have so seen some people hoeing and humming and thinking about what it all could be. It's like, you know what, guys? You just need to get in there, tear it down until you find the problem, because the water's obviously gone somewhere, right? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Let me show you what the oil looks like. <laughs> kind of gooey. Yeah, I don't think your oil is supposed to look like JB Weld. <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb here. Um, yeah, that's not right. You can also see how far up it is on the dipstick. If I can do this without making too much of a mess. The level is right about here. Okay, and the full mark, I believe, is somewhere down here. So, level's pretty much right there. And that's where it's supposed to be. So... <laughs> Customer gained about three or four inches of uh, oil. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's not right. So here we go. Trying to figure out what happened here. I know this uh, customer had some minor overheating problems in the past with his tractor uh, last year. 
So I don't know if that was the uh, head gasket slowly letting go. Now it's completely let go. I, I'm hoping it's something stupid simple as a gasket. Oh, what uh, what tales will be told with this thing? What we find? <laughs> but we shall soon see, my son. Yeah, this one's been on there a few thousand hours. We have to take off quite a lot of hosiery. Oh yes, that's all right. This is a pretty easy engine to work on. I, just by taking a quick look at it. Fun fact, this is not a John Deere engine. It's technically Yanmar is who built these for John Deere for these subcompact tractors or compact tractors, whichever you want to define that by. Wow. Goodness, that one's been on there for quite some time. There we go. Well, that works too. Okay. Before we can take the air box off, we have to take the oil supply line for the turbo off in order to get to the one of these bolts for the air box. Thank you, John Deere. Love your work, guys. <laughs> Could be a lot worse. Could be a pack car, which... <laughs> those are just... Ugh on anybody who has to work on those things. Nothing but problems with pack cars at work. Trouble codes, derating, everything. It's just, it's like everything nowadays. They just don't seem very well built. Oof. We didn't have green sludge, or we even have gray JB Weld sludge up in here. Oh, that's not good. All right, and this other side of that. Supply line is right here, which mm, need an extension for that. Switch on. Can you please duck up. So, since this is a Yanmar, it's Japanese, so most of everything here is going to be metric. So, just brace yourself. <laughs> Ugh. More gray yuckiness. Wonderful. I have to clear a lot of lines out here. This is going to be fun putting all this back together. It's probably going to require at least a couple of oil changes. They find the cheapest oil there just to flush it out. Of course, don't forget your compression washer. <laughs> okay, now we're going to undo the hold down brackets for the uh, oil turbo line. Turbo oil feed line. There you go. There's one there and there's one on the thermostat housing. All right, now it's loose. Gotta figure out how it snakes out of here. All right, so the reason why I undid the turbo feed line is because the two bolts that hold up to the air box, kind of a little too tight. So you gotta remove that so you can uh, take those off, which we'll do now. All right, and I think there's two on the other side here. Right over there. And we'll have two back here, if the light gets out of the way. And we'll have two bolts here in the back for the, uh, call it the rear support for the air box here against the firewall. And of course, I need something a lot smaller to get in there. I need a box in wrench. Was that 12 mils? Hold up. Can probably hardly see them, but trust and believe. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's taut. That's factory type. Lovely. Oh, no do that. Oh, there we go. Yes, I'm listening to music in the background. It's all in me head. It's all in me head. Really? I'm freaking back it all the way out with an end wrench for real, for real. Perfect. Oh, they need my magnet. I got it. I'm good. I'm good. Whew. 
it, it's leaking a little bit. I think I'll try to take the oil turbo feed line off next. We gotta remove this, uh, looks like it's a coolant bypass. I don't like how this is kinked here though. I, I do not like that at all. Let me zoom in here for you guys. You see how this hose is kinked? Yeah, that's not that's not quite right. So we'll have to either get a molded hose or put a 90 degree in there. I don't like that. But when you're out in the field and you got to make repairs out literally in the field, you just got to do what you got to do to get done for the day, you know? I've done much shadier stuff. <laughs> I need to take this hose off anyways to pull off the cylinder head, so. Okay, that's easy enough. Okay, I'm gonna take, take our, our oil feed line here. Gently as we practically can. Or maybe not. There we go. Okay. I've just elected to go ahead and remove the coolant. Overflow tank, expansion tank. It's just gonna get in the way. Get some radiator support rods can come off too. Really? Okay, I guess we're gonna move our return fuel return lines now from our injectors. All right, good note. If I had a good set of pliers. Ay, ay, ay. Let's go ahead and disconnect our fuel lines now. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna loosen up the, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the um, fuel injection lines on the other side so we can have enough space to pull it up, allegedly. <laughs> Just to let you know, when you take this off, the holder bracket, there are plastic inserts to keep all those lines in place. So try not to lose those if <laughs> they're not damaged, which looks looks like these ones have taken a severe beating over the years. All right, uh, I think next we're gonna undo our alternator bracket. This is part of the cylinder head, so obviously that needs to be disconnected. Go ahead and disconnect the water pump now. Well, I suppose we're going to have it bolted up. Ooh. And in which case, all we got to do is disconnect the radiator hoses. Either disconnect the radiator hoses or just pull the water pump off. Ooh, choices. Hold up. I right, scrub it. We'll take the... I don't want to take the fan off and everything or try to avoid that. So I'm going to try just pulling the pump off. Of course, I don't have a 10 millimeter socket. Got one 10 millimeter flare wrench to help me out here. It looks like it'll work. Ooh, blue RTV sealant. Hmm. Is that factory? I don't know. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if I can clear the propeller. Uh with it heading up against the radiator. So actually, I don't know if this pulling just the water pump is gonna work. I don't know. I mean, 
I've, I'm in here. Might as well place a water head, get uh, water pump gasket. So we'll get the whole kit probably anyway. So. No, oh, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> that was a steady stream. That's nice. Just kind of hold it here until it bleeds itself down, I guess. I'm still going to need a metric ton of floor dry. AKA cat litter. This is going to take a hot second to drain. I'll be right back when I get it all drained out. <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah, we will be able to clear that. Oh, yeah, we can easily clear that. Excellent. Okay, well. Still have to probably take off and clean up, but we're not worried about that right now. We just want to pull the cylinder head off and see what's going on here. Down, 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 bam, 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 bam. Ha, my phone dinged and you guys don't hear it. Ha, ha. Yes. Ooh, Charlie Daniels fan. There we go. Down, 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 down. Drinking my baby goodbye. That's a good song. My daughter, anyways, keeps it. I didn't try. Come on. Come on. So, with the other one, I'm drinking my baby goodbye. Simply when you're ready, sir. Thank you. The, ooh. Ugh. Looks a bit on the brownish side. Hmm. Not a fun. Not a fun. Honestly, we're getting closer. Now it's the parting I'm dreading. Getting the exhaust manifold off. I'm not that percent sure we're gonna need fire for that. Let's show you guys. These bolts are so incredibly rusty and crusty and heat cycled so much. They are incredibly nasty. Now, in my suggestion, if it is possible, try to take the least amount of bolts off and try to keep it all intact as much as possible. You know, don't go taking that off and taking that off because really, unless it's leaking, it's not necessary and you could break more bolts. So just try to disconnect the least amount possible from the engine block and keep this whole thing assembled as much as practicable. Obviously, if you're doing big trucks, things are heavy, so you just may have to, unless you got a hoist or a crane. But um, So I'm going to try just taking off the exhaust manifold bolts. There's six of them, it looks like. And uh, <laughs> see what transpires, but... I don't even know if I want to turn those without heat because those are just nasty looking. You can see that they are just, it's bad. It's really bad. They, uh, doesn't look good. So I'm just going to try. Um, I assume it's a, it was a 12 millimeter, I'm pretty sure, once upon a time. Yep, it's a 12 mil. But... <laughs> Look like it could be 11 and a half millimeters now by how rotted out they are. So, I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna gently try it. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Just, I was a little hopeful, but. Yeah, no. I'm just gonna the torch out. Absolutely, absolutely no reason to fight ourselves with that. See how easy it comes off now once you uh, heat it up? There we go. And there you go. Easy. And again, you don't... And you don't need a fancy torch like I have. A standard old butane torch would be just fine. Just get it glowing cherry, just get that nut glowing cherry red. That's what we want here. It's really nice about having studs in here instead of bolts. Problems on the outside, not on the inside. There we go. See, it's nice and glowing red there. Like that. That's what you want. See how easy it just comes off? 
It literally is that easy. <laughs> as long as you use heat. And that don't really feel like drilling and tapping. Look at that. Booyah. <laughs> Dark of the moon on the 6th of June in Kenworth, Paul and Logs. Cab over Pete with a reefer on and a Jimmy hauling hogs. With his head for bear on I want to know about a mile out of shaky town. I said, Pip Pen, this is a rubber duck. I'm about to put the hammer down. Mm, Tin fork, good buddies. All ahead full on that. be a bit of a toughie. Working right next to a fuel line is not ideal. Gosh dang it. That's the last one now. It's resting on the stud, so nothing's gonna fall down, allegedly. <laughs> folks for this portion I decided to undo the muffler at first I thought those four bolts holding the muffler on were through bolts I didn't have the shop manual at the time um, but it turns out those aren't through bolts just the six I've already undone were but hey you know if you got a leaking gasket you can do this too so if you guys see the mufflers disappear that's right that's why um, it also made it a little bit easier taking off the exhaust manifold to get that out of the way next thing we gotta do is uh forgot to do is undo our oil return from our turbo back down the crankcase. Mm. Yeah, that's been on there for a hot minute. <laughs> I don't know if that would be better to do that or that, that side. I don't know yet. Okay, that's simple enough then. So this is to, so in theory, turbo's disconnected. The exhaust manifold and the turbo should just come all off as well assembly now. Allegedly. <laughs> I should note, I believe some of these Yanmar uh, three-cylinder diesels did not come factory with a turbo. This is a factory turbo setup, I believe. So your engine may look a little bit different, but... Oh, it's still stuck. This is going to be fun to beat off. Actually, the uh, valve cover may not come off without taking this off anyway, so... I have to get a hammer and uh, gently shock it. Well, I'll get the Husky 3-pounder out here and gently do a tap, tap, tap on this. <laughs> well then, are you really just stuck on there that much or am I missing a bolt? 10,000 hours. Actually, this thing only has about 8,600 8, hours. Not surprised it's welded itself shut. Wouldn't be surprised. It's starting to wiggle. We're trying to get some wiggle action now. Whew! Otherwise, it'd be stuck on there that hard. It's just a little tiny manifold. 
It's not like you're working on a, you know, like a C13, C15 CAD or a 3406 or a, I don't know, Detroit 60 series or something. You know, so it's not that big of a freaking manifold, but man, is it stuck in there like blue. <laughs> the heats. I see some of these studs are moving with the manifold. I might have to actually heat the cast iron manifold up, get to expand just enough for it to pop out. And let's think of what's going on here. This one's stationary. So I'm wiggling at this one's stationary. This one's stationary. This one's this one's wiggling with a manifold and this one's wiggling with the manifold. This one is stationary. So these two have somehow super glued themselves onto the manifold. I'm gonna have to heat that up. <sighs> don't want to get too close. I got fuel lines right here. I don't want to pop anything here. Run penetrating oil program out here. Yeah, it's. Stop having it. Wow. It just doesn't want to have any of it now, does it? Now I got to move a millimeter or two. I did take a quick look on eBay and saw some pictures. There's only six manifold bolts here, here, and here to take this whole thing off. It's actually kind of nice to get around the uh, muffler anyways. Um, this stud still wants to wiggle with the manifold. It looks like it's, the stud's been out a little bit, so I'm going to put a uh, one of the nuts back on it and just slightly pound on it and see if I can't tweak it and pull it away from the manifold a little bit. Maybe that'll break it loose, I'm not sure. There's only six bolts, and I've already un I've already taken off the nut, so it's it's just stuck on there. That moved it a little bit. Now will this move at all? That's the same results. Well gosh dang it all. It's a good idea. I'm just gonna have to wiggle this for a while until it decides to wanna pull a Freddie Mercury and break free. Oh. Nuts! Hate to do a jump cut, I'm like, oh look, it's free! But um, I'm gonna run out of tape if I continue to do this, so um, maybe I'll report back here in another, another jump cut, I'll let you know how it's coming. Lovely. Okay, we're just getting just getting there now. It's just starting to come off. I'm literally just freaking prying on this thing everywhere I freaking can and hope that it'll break loose. But I did get some, got some wiggle out of it. The problem is prying right here. I have an oil line that comes all the way, snakes all the way back through the exhaust manifold on the backside. So again, a pry bar, you don't want to pinch that line shut. So it's, this is not exactly the easiest to get to. Just trying to get a good bite anywhere I practically can without damaging anything. Cause I could probably get a good bite on it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take that uh, oil return tube off the turbo. Lovely. Whatever. Uh. 
see, we can get this far. Let's rock it back and forth a few times on the good side that can get loose. And... That stud right there is completely frozen in that freaking manifold. It does not want to break loose and or break free. And get this hose out of here. Okay. Ah! Now what in the flip was that? Oh, it's my quarter inch wrench. Whew. This one, I actually need some heat. Thinking this one might actually need some heat. How much is going to catch on fire? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're going to be burning the old PG blaster off here for a second or two. Okay, so I'm just going to heat it up. Whoa, hello. Try to catch the grease on fire there, dude. Okay. We need to turn this thing down here. Turn it down. It's a little too much go go juice on the old. Hello. Ah! Hoorah! Might have to try to extract it then. Really don't want to, but. Ah, this is one stud we might just have to wind up drilling out or cutting out. That would really stink. Now we're gonna do a center hole punch to drill. Make sure this is centered as much as possible. Pretty good to me. That's nice. How far in are we? About half? One third? Yeah, I'll see if that works. For real, for real? There's nothing left attaching it. The bolt, I drilled it out. What? Ah! <laughs> Just can't have nice things. <clears throat> wow. Jeez. Wow. I just, I am blown away. Now heat it up some more. Oh, it's always a good day when you have to use a torch. <laughs> Finally got back behind it. Holy guacamole, Batman. Yeah! 
Yeah. Mm. Enter baby. Yeah, I mean. Come out. <laughs> oh, it's coming, it's coming. Take out this boot here. Whew. Ooh, a little warm. Oh, come on. Oh, ho. Whoo. Wow. That was stupid. See, it's only the six bolts. I had it right the first time. Holy cow. It's that bugger right there. I'll zoom in on a second. Ah! That's a trouble stud right there. Wow. You can see where also halt the, uh, you can see where the drill bit got into that far. I'll also have to get a new one for that, but that's fine. But wow. What a pain! <laughs> That's it's time for me to go get some lunch now. I'm I gotta wet up walk away from this for a minute. Catch my breath. Wow. But as you can see, we're getting closer to popping the cylinder head off. We're getting pretty gosh darn close now. Alright, we'll be right back when I've got some lunch. <laughs> go ahead and take our oil feed lines off as well. Decreasing a little bit. Looks like we can bend this out of the way enough. All right, we're pretty much clear of this. Let's go on the other side now. Get ourselves sorted in. Okay, the injectors can come off with the cylinder head. That's fine. I think it's time to take the valve cover off and get the cylinder head bolt. I think someone needs a new valve gasket cover. Okay, that one's loose. That should be it, shouldn't it? Now, what is a valve train look like? Oh yeah, it's a little bit gray. Woo, got some moisture in there too. Well, obviously. Coker stopped by and said, yeah, I think you got a little bit of emulsification issues in here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's not good, not good. Valves are, valve adjusters are loose. I think it's time to undo some cylinder head bolts, methinks. 22 mils. Well, I can't get to this back one. So apparently, I need to undo my rocker arms. Next, okay, well, whatever. That's fine, this is fine, everything is fine. Of course, we can probably take them all out because all of them are going to need cleaned up from this flipping oil contamination. So, okay, fine, whatever. Come on, transmission.
I hope you can see if it's pop it loose at the very least. So hopefully this pops loose better than the freaking exhaust manifold. <laughs> oh yeah. We got some wiggle. Oh yeah. Oh come on. Looks like I forgot to uh looks like there's a brace for my oil supply line for the cylinder head on the other side. I forgot to undo. All right, so that's the oil supply line. It looks like there's actually a brace right here that's bolted to it right there. Gotta do that bolt right quick. Okay, now we're loose. Oh, ay, ay, ay. What a time to be alive. Take a closer look. I'll get this cleaned up and see what we got. Well, looking at this, I really can't find anything wrong with the cylinder head gasket. Honestly, it looks pretty good. I really don't see much by way of problems. Cylinder head looks pretty good too. Um, really, I don't see anywhere water could have gotten in here. I just gently wiped it and I just can't see any streakings whatsoever. It may have a crack. On the inside of the valve seat, you have to take the valves out to find out. I might do that. But honestly, initial inspections, it's the uh, cylinder head doesn't look all that bad. Looking at the cylinders, also they don't look bad either. Either. It even has the cross hatches still. Now, the only difference I can find is we gotta rotate that one. That one looks good. But it looks like there's a little bit of a rust powder or something. I don't know if that fell in. Or if that's where our water intrusion uh, is guilty, if the uh, bottom, if the uh, cylinder liner is bad at the bottom, the bottom seal failed. But there's a little bit of rust right there. Show me I have to rotate these cylinders a little bit and see if uh, we can see a crack or something. If not, we'll probably have to drop the oil pan off and take a look at the bottom end and see what's going on. Okay, well. I didn't find much. I'm guessing this is bottom bottom gasket for the uh, liner that's gone out. So we need to drop our oil and oil pan, or rather oil cover plate, and uh, see if we see any evidence there. <laughs> Man, that is, that's JB Weld Gray. That's not good. Now. Oops. Okay, one of them's in the oil pan, I guess. Whatever. Hold, hold that one there so I don't get splattered on. Did I bump the camera yet again? Really? Now, obviously, this tractor, in order to drop the oil pan, you need to remove the forward prop shaft or drive line to gain access to the oil pan. This tractor came in with it disconnected because my customer was having problems with it and he's fixing it on his own. So unfortunately I can't show that to you. Ah, yes. Can't play copyright music. Skeeter Davis just came on the radio. Keep on shining. Oh, this is going to make a nasty mess. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, you just sit there and drain then for another half an hour. <laughs> Or may I let this set here overnight? I don't know yet. That thing's looking like clay mud. It's disgusting. All right, I'm gonna light the stream. I'll be right back and finish my tunes. Ah! Gosh dang it. I thought that screw was in there more. Okay, whatever.
Okay, just realized the camera wasn't recording. We're gonna go ahead and pull the cylinder liners out. I marked three, two, and one, as you can see right there. Uh, we'll go ahead and probably use the same pistons and liners. We're just gonna reseal the coolant system. Because honestly, this tractor one's pretty good. Doesn't smoke at all. Um, starts up very easily in the cold in the winter time. I can still see cross hatches in the liners themselves. So we're not going to waste money in doing a full rebuild. Obviously, if you're in this far, if you got engine problems, may not be a bad idea. But for, I mean, the sake of longevity, this thing's still got thousands of hours probably left in it. So let's go ahead and uh, drop our connecting rods and pop these pistons out. rod out or connecting rod cap out there's the first bearing very little wear I don't know if this was rebuilt or not right there you guys won't be able to see that but it is stamped Yanmar on it 07 FB it is a Yanmar it's a it's an official one I don't know if this thing was rebuilt or not. It's kind of believe hard at 8,000 miles. It kept that clean. This did belong to a turf uh, company once upon a time. So allegedly early in its life, it had some good maintenance on it. If, well, that's a gamble to say that, but first bearing looks pretty darn good. I'm, yeah, there's no reason to put new bearings or caps or no reason to put uh, pistons and bearings in here if that looks that good. Let's go ahead and scoot you guys over and we'll work on, well, I guess I can pop that cylinder out right quick, I guess. Popo on patrol. Oh, quit beeping me, people. Oh yeah, these bearings look terrific. Really liking them, really liking what I see. Are we out? Hey. Look at that. I mean, look how cute those little connecting rods are. So cute. Love it. Stout little buggers, though. Yeah, that piston. We'll clean these pistons up and I'll show you when I put them back in, but I really don't see anything wrong with these at all. I really don't see any scuffing at all. Yes, I can see through oil. <laughs> Took a three pounder to get out of it. That was a little more tough looker. I don't see anything immediately catastrophic here. Excellent. I like it. Pull the cylinder liners out. I got one of these stupid cheap Chinesium just this just might work for $60 kit. Um nothing terribly special about it. Uh we're gonna see if it works. It should. I've been told uh Reading on the internet, people have had good luck, at least with the small engines, Yan Mars, of using this kit to pull them out, so that's what we're going to do. So we take this guy here, I believe it's a 90 millimeter, 
and that would be the upper ledge. These, these ledges come in two different flavors. You got uh, two different sizes of millimeters. This one is stamped 95 or 85 to 90. So one of the ledges is 80 and the other ledge is the other size right there. Um, so you got you basically got two flavors. It looks like this would work. I'm using the slightly large one, so this would be the 90 millimeter. And this does have a flex head on it, and you can swap out sizes, of course. Okay, so it comes with a bearing. You'll see here in a second. Everybody lubes them up. I will do the same. I'm just using whatever oil that was in a nice little nozzle here. Just lube the races up. This is a very, very cheap bearing. If you're using anything, any, using this on any big engine, <laughs> um, this probably won't work. I guess worst case scenario, if we ruin this thing because it smushes so easily, I'm able to stack some washers and grease the washers up and use that. I, I don't know. So now with that bearing being greased, go ahead and set up our puller now. Okay, so I do have one stud here. I might actually try doing this like this possibly. This has a pivot head, so you just you can just go straight down and lock it in. If you're building your own, you could just run a string down there so you can do everything, do everything from the top side without worrying about getting that puller over the crankshaft. I'm not worried about lining stuff up quite yet. We're just mocking this up here, get everything all lined up. Obviously, you want to pull as straight as you can. Okay, that's fairly fairly tight enough. Nothing's gonna fall apart allegedly. <laughs> now, obviously, when you're pulling, you want to make sure, <laughs> obviously, your standoffs are clear of your liner that will be coming out. And now we're just kind of trying to make everything nice and square as possible in the bore, so it has a direct pull straight up. Make sure this thing isn't leaning, twisted in any way. Sounds good on paper. Looks pretty good to me. This thing does come with a couple of handles here. And on the bottom, that's what it looks like on the underside. I may have to hold that bolt in, I don't know yet. Looks like that puller will just clear the liner, just barely I'll show you when I have it out. If I can get out with this piece of junk uh, puller, be none the wiser. So you can't do everything from top side, you don't have to fight pulling that pusher over that crankshaft. You can if you want, but <laughs> it's gonna take you a little bit longer, but it can be done either way. All right, so I guess we're just gonna start heave hoeing and See what comes out. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna twist. Um, and we're twisting. All right, we're just twisting our uh, our bottom bowls, hoping it would stop here. And actually, no, nope, I think I gotta hold it from the bottom end. Wonder if I can get away with just doing this here, to keep it still. Can't quite get, grab onto it very well. Maybe this will work. Who knows? Oh, wow, that's a lot of load. Jeez, don't like that. Oh, I think it is coming out though. Be much nicer if these were fine threads instead of coarse threads. A lot easier to torque down, but yeah, it's coming out. Oh, other way, Donkus. There. Finally breaking loose now. Good, I'll have to get an expensive socket to hold the bottom end. Folks, you're gonna have to have your Wheaties though. <laughs> and there we are. Liner, technically this is liner number two, but the first liner I've pulled out. All right. We are loose, folks. We are loose. 
Figure that's been in there since 1980. What is this thing? An 87? 83? I can't remember. So, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, if it, these are original heat cycles and everything, yeah, they're going to be in there for a little. They I mean, might be a little bit on the taut side. Okay, let's pull our puller out here. And hopefully. There we are. I don't see the O-rings. They must be on the, uh, yeah, they're on the block. So taking a look up close, we do have a bit of gray, but we do have some black here, which means oil never got that far up. Looks like a little dribble of water right there. Okay. Seems pretty clean right here. I don't know if I brushed up against that or not. That could be it. As far as the liner themselves, are a little bit of scaling. But there's no heavy pitting, I don't think, here whatsoever. There's a little bit here. You can see where the mating surface is for the ring itself. It's pretty pitted or um, built up. Now looking at this closer, cleaned up. One of the O-rings sits here and the other O-ring sits here. We got Quite, quite a nasty little build up here. Um, I think this is all supposed to be a smat, flat, smooth surface. So just uh, cleaning them up with some gentle sandpaper or maybe a wire brush should be able to fix it. But um, there, is a, there is some slight surface corrosion here where the gaskets meet, where the O-rings meet technically. So it probably could definitely use a cleanup. I don't directly see any I don't directly see any pinholes in the liner. I don't think there's a reason why we can't use that. We'll just, hopefully this will clean up really nicely. And be forewarned, with you diesel owners, you wanna use diesel coolant when practicable so you prevent pitting on your liners. This is what they're talking about, right? You wanna make sure that you wanna use, um, it's got uh, SCAs in there or additives to prevent um, cavitation and cavitations where the water can escape the surface of the liner and air can slip underneath it and that's what starts your pinholes. Fortunately this tractor looks pretty good condition. We do have a bit of scaling here. That scaling not pitting because we can scrape that off so uh, looks like these liners are pretty good. I think my uh, my customer he just used green antifreeze before I said hey yeah you may want to run some um, some actual diesel coolant in here is to, pres to preserve these liners. And uh, these liners look pretty good from the get-go. They just need a good cleaning. So let's take a look at the O-rings here for cylinder number two. We do have some oil in the water jacket. This is where your water jacket is. We do have obviously have oil in here that's black. It hasn't been mixed yet. I'm still assuming that those gaskets are bad. One's the, I think the upper one there's two of them, two O-rings down there. One of them is a packing uh, gasket, I think, and the lower one's your actually sealing gasket. If I reach down in here, pardon me, guys. Feeling here, they feel fairly flat, which means they're smushed, just due to time, you know, 8,000 hours and whatnot. They, they feel pretty flat. Um, I'm waiting on John Deere uh, for the new ones to come in. I'll feel what they feel like when I put the new ones in, but that's it's pretty... A pretty flush surface with the metal, which means they're, they've been squished out over the years. So let me guys down in here. You see that upper ridge? That's where the packing uh, packing ring is supposed to be. Or John Deere calls it a packing nut. It's your upper seal. And then the lower seal, which is your oil, it's pretty flat. Um, that's probably our smoking gun is that upper seal that's completely gone out and allowing uh, water to get into the lower near the lower ceiling ring or ceiling o-ring that's probably what it is it has to be it because this half to this half freaking disintegrate it's half of it's not even there on the ledge <laughs> that's probably our smoking gun that's where i'm gonna put my money <laughs> so with reaching in here oh yeah oh yeah yeah, there's a hole. 
<laughs> there's a whole packing o-ring here that's completely disintegrated into whatever there's a piece of it right there that's that's lovely yeah that packing that upper packing seal is completely completely um turned into mud <laughs> that's that's gonna take some cleaning up that is just some remnants of it in here Sorry for the GoPro quality camera, but I can't get my big camera in here. It's just too tight. I don't even know what. Allegedly, these are colored, uh, at least from John Deere. I think red, I don't know if red's the oil one, and I don't know if it's yellow is the other color. There's no color left, and it's just, this is just nasty. Yeah, there is no, yeah, this, this seal's failed. Well, half of it's missing. <laughs> what what left has failed? <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's not good at all. Well, so that's that. Yes, I'll rinse all this down. I gotta put towels in there here, whatnot. But let me get that O-ring out now and see how flat it is. I don't know if we'll be able to have you guys in here or not while I do this. This is very, very close quarters having you guys in here. But let's see here. Let's gouge this in and see if we can pull it out. There we go. Okay, so that's red, so the red's on the bottom, and I think it was, it was supposed to be yellow on the top at one time. To... Sounds pretty crusty to me, guys. Sounds pretty crusty to me. Well, at least the lower one's somewhat intact, although it's probably pretty flat. Let's take a look. So this is the gasket. That goes into the engine block. This crusty outer piece, that's what goes against your cylinder liner. And although it's not flat, it has seriously gotten chewed up over the years just due to the um, the cylinder liners, expansion, contraction, scaling of your coolant system. Um, it's, it's, I'd say it's in rough shape. It's got nicks and dings everywhere. So I think all this needs is just a simple resealing. Just need some new seals and we're good to go. I'll uh, compare the old ones with the new ones once we get them in. I don't have them in yet. The dealership says it should be here in a day or two. You can see some heavy gouging there, or at least heavy. I don't know if you call it corrosion, because it's technically an O-ring. But uh, definitely disintegrated. We can use that word. Definitely disintegrated. Um, <laughs> I'd show you the packing, uh, packing one, but you can see it's coming out in pieces. So this is the actual, what seals the oil off. And um, you know, I've got some pretty deep gouges in there, so definitely, definitely looking pretty pitiful. It, that's a very poor seal that that would happen. All right, well, let's uh, so we'll go ahead and pull the other two liners out now and see what those look like. Now that we've got one liner out, how this works is this is the top side. You simply push, or rather, lower this in here. And that's how it pulls it. Obviously you wanna make sure you're right on the shoulder. Just enough clearance that when the puller comes up, it'll clear the block, but enough meat on here that you're gonna grab your liner and not, uh, you know, uh, break it in any way. You can make your own. You just gotta know the circumference of the liner itself. But that's basically how it works. And then you just pull it out of the block. So that's basically how that works. Okay, right about there should be good. Got our handy dandy standoffs. In our bearing. Bearing's holding together for now. Obviously this is a smaller engine. If you go anything bigger, then eh, that thing probably won't take it. I, I put a lot of force on that bad boy. Okay, lower it ever so slightly. Make sure the uh, puller is actually aligned. It's not uh, binding up. We're gonna try it center. Center's where we're gonna be with this cheap junk, but so far it's actually working. Kick this back in, you see how that's not right? There you go. Gotta make sure everything's nice and square. Take your time, especially if you're reusing re your liners. You don't wanna muck it up. Yeah. 
I am using a four foot cheetah bar, but you can feel it. It's coming. It's not binding up much in any way. Those T-handles are just a little too hard to hold on to. Yep, it's definitely starting to protrude. Good. I'm finding um, this vice grip holds it pretty easily. I'm not putting too much effort into it. I'm just holding it just enough to keep it from spinning. And that's what's allowing the tool to function somewhat correctly, so that's not bad. Putting this back in is going to be a lot of fun, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll put the uh, liners in the freezer overnight. So they're nice and cool, everything's contracted, and they should, boink, they should pop in a lot easier. I would hope. I would hope. But it's going fairly easily, it's just long-winded. Oh, Did my nut back off? I think it did. Now that I got that nut super tight, it looks like I don't have to hold that shaft anymore. Oh, no, never mind. It's going to make a liar out of me. Okay, so I guess check that nut. Make sure it's tight at all times. And... Yeah, see here, this is the tricky bit. This engine's small enough, but just big enough that these liners are... It's really hard to do this by hand, but I guess... It might work. <sighs> this isn't a race, so you just a little out of time. There we go. And we're clear. All right. Come on. Really? There we go. Okay. No, what the? Nice. All right. What well, lies behind door number one? Yeah. Don't look too terribly bad. Well, this thing's ever been rebuilt. I don't know. I can't tell. I'm not good at that for these diesels. Take a look at those rings right quick. Cylinder number one, same story. Lower you guys down in here. Don't worry, the we're OSHA approved. We're all strapped in. We got our harnesses on. I have not touched this whatsoever. As you can see, we got a huge ledge that's missing its ring. You can see where it's uh, somewhat intact. If we scroll over to here, you can see what a huge gap is. Plus, you notice those, wa notice those water droplets on the bottom. Definitely, definitely this is the mixing point where oil is starting to mix in with water for sure. I'm convinced of it. So you see where the packing ring is quasi-intact? And then right here, I have not touched this since you guys have been down here. There is literally a ledge right here. The whole thing is completely gone. Yowzers. Obviously, this is the coolant jacket. Oil's not supposed to be right there. But it's black. It's Well, you can tell it's it's starting to mix a little bit. But this is basically where the mixing action is. You also notice that the, there's water puddles right here, 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 and here. This is definitely where the water was starting to interact with the oil. 
Again, we have our lower red oil seal ring. This definitely packing ring is definitely poo-pooed. I don't know what the heck this material is made out of. Well, this can't be cork, but it's something bad. But yeah, definitely, definitely failed uh, failed liner O-rings for sure. And absolutely 100%. Okay. Well, now that we've seen the damage on here, let's go ahead and uh, work on getting the last one out. Let's go ahead and pull this last one out now. Not much of a shelf to pull on with this puller, but it's it's working. I'm pleasantly surprised. With two out of three, that's not terrible. Where's your Jeremy Clarkson? Still, give it us. Yeah. Surprising that bearing's holding out. But this is a small engine, so that's fine. Yeah, oh, that's right. Okay, cylinder tool's grabbing the ears, the very end of the liner. My light's not staying. Wait! Shay put I shay. And then, let's slowly start tweaking this back up. Can't put the handles on here because we're running against our fuel tanks. Yeah. We're just doing this here. Port rods look like they're intact enough. All right, here we go. This could be really, really interesting. This could get a little awkward, I don't know yet. Gonna be tight. Gonna be tight. Okay. And it is starting to come out. That's good. That's a good sign. Taking that off and putting this handle back on. Just showing you guys. Yeah, oh yeah, you can do it. It's just gonna take you a while. But there is no other way. <laughs> well, you can get, you get yourself a proper puller tool, I guess. But okay, round and round we go. Spin me right round like a record, baby. Right round, round, round. You guys want tractor content, so <laughs> albeit to the dismay of my customer here, he's really waiting on this thing. He's chomping out of the bits, even paid in advance. Like, here, here's here's money, go to the dealership then, whatever it takes. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so he is willing. He is in very, very much need of this tractor running ASAP, so like, all right, I can fix you up then. Get all sorted out. I didn't realize it was bringing co tractor content so quickly, but... <laughs> Glad I can. That case tractor really took off. I don't know why the algorithm decided to take off with it, but... It's probably going to be my most viewed video ever for some bizarre reason. I think I was extra excited because that was the first summer actually i received a paycheck from youtube after i was monetized it wasn't much but you know <laughs> it's only making a few pennies a day but you know and this uh these trying times economical hardship times it's every few coins you can get it really does help where you can get it so I'm very grateful for that so i think that's why i was a bit wound up like a tight spring <laughs> on that one especially although that is who i am
But there was some excitement, I'm not gonna lie. All right, all right, I think we got it loose enough here. It looked like that middle one was the hardest one to pull out. Interesting. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, uh-oh. We good? We're still good? We still good? Or did the nut fall off again? It shouldn't have. Yeah, that's. What's going on here? Oh, no, it's just coming out. Okay, whatever. I broke something there for a second. Oh, now it's loading back up. Come on. There we go. All right. Okay, well, that wasn't too terribly painful then. Oh, quit being such a poo poo head. Come on. I'm dropping everything down there. Here, let's do something different. Let's just pull the liner out first. <laughs> you donkus. Definitely needs a cleanup. It doesn't look terribly bad, to be honest. Oh, look at it. it pulls right out now. <laughs> I'm such a... I'm such a... I'm such a goof. As a, you guys already know, of course. Well, for $60. The tool did work, and you're gonna have to hold it up here, but it does work. All right, fair enough. And, yep, same old story. And yes, same old story again. Most of the, uh, the upper one is completely gone. Starts in right there. And a little bit lower, we will have our o-ring for our uh, oil side yeah for the upper side there is no gasket left here for the uh, where the o-ring is supposed to be at it's the seals completely gone from the coolant side it's just a big ring off to the side though again it's the same story that's fine it's always missing on this side it's kind of interesting um, yeah so there you go it's just the cylinder liner gaskets that are gone at the bottom that's the only thing I can figure so I'm just gonna obviously clean this up offline. It's just a lot of scraping and messing about. Let's see how one of those liners clean up at the base where the gasket meets and see how pitted they are, see how good they're at, they look. So what I'm gonna do, combination of just doing this, gently as I practically can, and then probably get some my uh, gasket scraper. You can hear that crunch. I'm just gonna combination of this and the wire wheel and it should clean up pretty nicely it feels like everything up here it's not pitted it's actually raised which is a good thing so this is gonna be very boring so I'm gonna put on some copyright tunes and do a little bit play a little bit of the old school honky-tonks mm -hmm. and uh, I'll report back when I get this all cleaned up and get the engine block cleaned up as well. And we'll be right back with the results. Then hopefully by that time, the freaking dealership calls me up and says, yeah, your parts are in. But uh, dealerships, I just, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Let me do a cleanup, guys. I'll catch you on the flip side. Be right back. Remember when I pulled the uh, cylinder head studs out and uh, some of them, the whole stud came out of the block? Not a big deal. It just, I mean, this was just on a little bit more tighter, a little bit more glued to the stud than the, um, stud was glued to the cylinder head but we can fix that just by putting it into the vise alone you're probably not going to be able to break it loose you're going to need a little bit of fire or if you got guys got the electronic inductive loop you know get in there and get it hot as well i got fire here that'll work just fine we're not going to glow this up to be cherry red right we just need it just you know several hundred degrees just hot enough to expand those out just enough so we can back it off and honestly it won't take much heat Just enough heat just to get the party started. It 
it shouldn't ruin them, I wouldn't think. Like I said, just don't glow them cherry red. Just get to several hundred degrees, you know, three, four hundred degrees enough that should be able to just walk them right off. Don't forget the washers. And we'll do one more. Now if this one will. Oh. <laughs> okay, this one doesn't need fire. Okay, well your mileage may vary. All right, well, you guys get the general idea. Oh, oh no, we are loading up again, eh? Okay, fair enough. We will need some fire. I got plenty of fire in stock. Let's just go back. Right here. Making a liar out of me. I am very displeased. <laughs> there we go. But you really need these studs torqued down nice and tied up against a block before putting these nuts on. Oopsies. Ouch! That's warm. Perfect. Yes, I know I am. Oh, y'all. Alright. There you go. Simple as pie. Ooh, I can use some pie right now. Okay, installing the liner O-rings first. You will have one red one and one black one. Now, in the original printed manual, this is supposed to be gray. I don't know what happened. We had to change colors. This one goes on the bottom. This is your, basically it seals off your oil. And this is the upper one, which more or less basically seals off your coolant passage. I should, I should say, when all practical with mission critical stuff like this, buy OEM parts only. Don't go with the cheap stuff. The set of these for this engine costs like $16 for the O-rings. Um, it's not that expensive. <laughs> Nothing fits like OEM. You want to put these in dry. We'll lube them up later. Thing is, you want to, you do not want to use oil, uh, specifically engine oil or petroleum oil for that matter, because it will swell these up, and you might have an incredibly hard time fitting them in, and or may not fit, and they they tend to swell up. So you want to use Dawn disc detergent soap like that. Okay. Lower ones have been installed. So we'll just put these in dry for right now. These are a little bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie. You gotta work with them. Gosh dang it, they are. Take your time, they'll, they'll go in. There we are. Okay. Yeah, you can actually feel the ridges on the O-ring now. <laughs> so that's what the uh, O-ring's installed. And now literally you just coat them with Dawn disc soap. <laughs> literally, works just fine. It will not swell up the seals, but, provide, but it will provide excellent lubrication. I don't know if this is completely necessary or not. The book didn't say anything you had to do it, but I did put the liners in the freezer. They're gonna take a second to thaw out on the mating surface, but I put them in the freezer just so uh, it's a little bit more contracted and in theory it'll be a little bit easier to push in there. So obviously you wanna make sure that your mating surface here is good. It's not carbon build up in any sort of way on the ledge. And of course, you wanna make sure there's no carbon build up on that ledge there as well. So now, we take the wife's dishwashing soap that she did not know I took out of the kitchen. I carefully snuck back into the shop and all that lubed up. Okay. Line up my marks. And 
hopefully, should go down without too much fuss. Trying to rock it back and forth, like in an X pattern. That seemed to work. The manual does say block and hammer method. I remember number two, this was a real bugger to pull out. So I'm very grateful that it went in with it frozen, so I probably would suggest that. Okay, stop. You're not gonna put it all the way into the block. This ledge right here, I'll zoom in for you guys, needs to be protruding from the block uh, for the 1050 series tractor. For the 1050 model tractor, it's like one to four thousandths, and I think the 850 950s are two to five thousandths clearance. So the 850 is two to five thousandths, and 950 and 1050, they're one to four thousandths. For some reason the 950 and the 1050 is just a little bit more taut. So then you gotta get your dial indicator set up. We're still over like 20 thousandths, which I can see it's protruding from the block. So, scotia back down a little bit more. I may have dropped it too far, I'm not sure yet. Yep, I dropped it too far. Gosh dang it all. Now I gotta pull it up a little bit. Okay, that's protruding. Okay. So this is gonna take a lot of fussing and finessing. I'll come back with the results. Oh. Yeah. Let me get this thing set up proper. You guys get the general idea. You measure this outer portion of your liner. There we go. There's our 2000s. Retract it, it goes back to zero. Go in again. Eh, it might be 3000s, back to zero. When you retract it. Yeah, I call that a win. All right. So the liner two is ready to go. Oh, by the way, here's something fun. Uh, Yadmar calls that rear one the first cylinder, second, and the third cylinder is up front. I just, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, that will definitely do. Right, moving on to cylinder number one per Yadmar, or as I like to call it, cylinder number three. <laughs> Isn't there nothing more satisfying than using OEM parts? Mm. Absolutely, darlings. There is no greater thrill. I just realized that my big fat hand's gonna be in here, so you guys are not gonna see anything till the very end, but that's hey ho, that's just fine. Oh, well, I think we'll get it this time around. Ha <laughs> ha! There we are. Yes, you guys can inspect it when the job's done. Just hang about. So, in between putting the red one on and the black one on, you have to come over here. You gotta flip your chicken, okay? This is all part of the process. Trust and believe, folks. Trust and believe. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. There we are. Excellent. And then once that's back to cooking, then you can put the other O-ring in. Yes, this is part of the process. Oh, I <laughs> forgot to do this. Quick comparison. Here's the old gasket, and this is the new one. <laughs> Think there was a problem? <laughs> no, you're the problem. No, oh, well. That... Okay, guys, well, you got to go over for a second. There we go, guys. All nice and looking good again. 
Very nice. Definitely an improvement over the <laughs> the previous seals. <laughs> Again, get the wife's dish soap. Okay, got the Earl on here. Line up our marks. See how easy that's going in? It's pretty much how it should be. Woo, I hope that wasn't too much. Measuring thousands of an inch is so finicky. No, no. Went in a little too much. Gosh darn it all. Oh well, we can remedy that. I guess that's the problem with freezing these liners. <laughs> At least on this tractor. They go in a little too easy. There we go. Alright, we got protrusion. Just enough. But <laughs> Let's do it by hand. Zero. Three thousandths. Back to zero. It's repeatable. Three thousandths. Boom. All right. Rear liner has been set. Let's move on to the front. Need to do a little bit of housekeeping right around here. I don't know if I went too far with this one or not. Yeah, I may have sunken in a bit too far. Dang it! It's got a little too carried away. Yeah, I'll pull it out a little bit. Yeah, well, just about two thousandths. Okay, that's good enough for me. Contrary to what I usually would do in this situation, I'm not going to even bother to remove the rings. Because I want this thing put back together because I've got a uh, little yellow pickup that needs to be worked on ASAP. So what we're just going to do is give a nice spritzy sport spritz clean up here. The solvent should clean most of it up. Then we blow it down, of course. Simply dunk your piston into some yummy engine oil. Let that ferment for a couple of minutes and we're ready to install. Oh, I need my put my bearing in there. So I'll give that a minute or two of soak and we're ready to install. Now, I'll just do a little bit of uh, brake cleaner. It's gonna clean out the liner a little bit. 
Yes, technically this will dry it out, but they've been moved around in the shop enough. I want a nice clean bore, so oil's getting dropped right back in it so we can break clean it up right quick. Get all nice and tighty. Oh yes. Uh, I hate this tile of com com hate this style of tool of compression ring compressor. <laughs> wow. Whew. But we'll see if we can get it to work. This thing is on its last leg, it's bent everywhere and see how this works block of wood so these are stamped on both sides, uh, both the cap and the rod itself. However, another way you can check is we've got witness marks here, and the tang is on this side, so both tangs go on one side, and the tang is on this way, so we do know that this goes in this way. No, I'm not gonna torque these down quite yet. I just wanna snug them up and then rotate the engine. I'll tighten them all up when they, uh, it's down here I can get to them easier and examine the uh, connecting rods and the connecting rod caps to make sure it's all mated nicely like. But there you go. Two more to go. Uh, all three cylinders are back in. Pretty uneventful. Torquing this to 40 foot pounds, but obviously you're your model might ever so slightly vary. So definitely check your service manual, of course. So we got all right. Torqued. Work, 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 work. Shout out to my sweetest chef. Oh yeah. I think we can actually put the oil pan back on. Now the scene thing stop bleeding on my flipping floor. I haven't even put any floor dry on the body, man, because why bother? <laughs> this literally took me a freaking hour. A couple new gouge marks in the block and we're good to go. But that was I'm about dang gone winded out here, folks. Alright. The gasket is on there, right? Yes. Hopefully I don't have to open this dang on thing up for another 10 years. That'd be nice. Jeez, I can't even get my... That one's so freaking mangled up. I think that was towards the front. I'll have to edit it later, but by the way, to drop this, you gotta drop your front drive line. <laughs> this one had a boo boo a while ago, and have yet to fix it. All right. Look, I can get it tight now. There we go. That's fine. Apparently, we're gonna need another eight millimeter bolt at some point. Little hole for our purposes. Oil cover on. I'd say oil pan was more of a cover. Oh, crud muffin. You know, one of my instructors, and I agree with him, he said when you do stuff like this, either have the oil drain bolt all the way in or all the way out. Don't leave it like this because you're gonna possibly forget it. You either have it in, if you have it in, it's all the way tight, or if you want to have it out, have it all the way out. So there can't be any foo bars. Right. I'm done laying on my back with this pig. Time to take you guys topside. Now I didn't want to do this part until the very end because my liners are marked and I didn't want to remove the mark. But basically what's going to happen is if you're reusing your liner, make sure you scrape off 
the carbon not only on the lower shoulder here the one that we measured with the dial indicator but you're also going to want to scrape off this upper ledge hill this is also part of the ceiling right here and as you can see i have a little bit of carbon here this is probably the most important part because that's right where the compression gets sealed off right obviously you'll have to clean your bore up a little bit because you might get some guff in here should have done this out of the tractor but i didn't want to lose my marks either so you may want to consider doing this out of the tractor Ew. I had some schnots in it. Ew. Now, reading on the internet, allegedly these studs have been known to walk out uh, on their own. <laughs> I can feel a couple, couple of them are loose. Now, obviously, I blasted them with an impact, so they're a little bit loose. I suspect it could be a problem because <laughs> three of my studs just decided to go out. So all I'm going to do is take a, a nice old school pipe wrench it's going to tweak these just enough just to make sure they're solid solid enough but just enough obviously you're gonna they're gonna tweak down more when you actually get a the nut on the top side but if these things are prone to uh, walking out or the nuts walking out, I mean, you're here, might as well just make sure. Don't have to, I don't think you got to tweak these to 30,000 foot pounds, but um, just give them a friendly, a friendly little tautening up, as it were, is what I'm going to do. May want to check yours as well. That loaded up fine. Last thing you want is head stud problems. I mean, thank goodness they're head studs and not bolts, but better clamping force, of course, but. Oh yeah, that one was way loose. See, now, it may not have been able to tighten all the way down if we just went uh, without looking at these things. There we go, it's got some good spring to it now. I have to come over to your side. Yeah, all of them can use a tightening here. There we go. All right. Nothing ridiculous, but get them drawn up nice and taut. And these studs are pointing in one direction. There's a crown on top of it. And there's a concave bit right here. So I'm going to assume the concave bit goes down. Yeah. Just checking the studs. I believe the manual says they're supposed to go in wet. And these, oil, these um, holes are wet enough with oil, which should suffice. Again, look at that dome piece goes on top, it looks like. I believe the longer one goes up front, if I remember right. <laughs> Better not make a liar out of me. If it does, I'll just edit it out. <laughs> no. You guys like watching me watching make an idiot of myself, so hey-ho. All right. All right, that should suffice. Remember, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Considering this head gasket was on here for 8,000 hours, that's not bad. Head gasket, very important. Get the OEM only. Aftermarkets might work and I'll show you what's wrong with them. You don't want to skimp out on this particular, if this there's one gasket you don't want to skimp out on, it's your head gasket. This cost about $95 at my local dealership retail, but it is an official, well, it's basically Yanmar. It's made in uh, Japan. I bought an aftermarket gasket to show you the difference between Aftermarket parts and OEM parts. Okay, you notice it goes down fairly easy, right? For the most bit, just give it a second. It's a little taut, but it's not bad. 
and then boom, just goes all the way down. Perfect. This is the aftermarket one. Notice it's a lot tighter to get on here. And we're starting to bulge right here, okay? So maybe we'll do this one first. I don't care about ruining this one, but it is extremely tight over here. I'm ruining the gasket as I try to push down on it. Oh, it is does not want to go down very well. I've heard that a lot of people have actually have to waller these uh, stud holes out a little bit in order to get this thing to go down. This is gasket was only $40. Was it $40? I can't remember. And you, as you can see, we're already ruining the gasket. It just, it just, it just won't go. Now I'll probably have to clean my cylinders up again. <laughs> see how we have deformed the gasket already. Also, the aftermarket gaskets will not tell you up or down. It is not signified here in any way, shape, or form. If we get the genuine gasket, it will tell you which side is top side. And there's another reason why these only OEMs will fit. There's your patent number, meaning you cannot copyright this exactly. You can get close to this, but again, copyright issues, it needs to be a little bit different to avoid copyright and lawyer stuff. This is the one part, again, why you uh, should go OEM. Don't skip out on this part, people. <laughs> now see how fairly easy this goes in? I say fairly easily, it's still a little bit, there we go. That's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> <sighs> now it's time to do the hefty lifting, which means you guys need to actually go over here, and I need to go over there, because it's easier to reach over there than with a steering arm over here. Confused? Perfection. This, of course, it's all been cleaned up on the bottom end. Mm. I'm not going to try to put this on without my cherry picker, which is probably a stupid idea, but oh well. I've done worse things in my life. Uh-oh. Well, there goes my phone. That's wonderful. Okay. Right then. Oh, let's go find some nuts. I did check the manual and they do say the uh, threads are supposed to be wet both on the studs and the bolts. I think it's for the 915-852 peeps as well. I'm not 100% certain. The 1050 in the manual is just a little bit, it's in a different section. The 850 and the 950 are a little bit different than the 1050s. Although I think the 850s and 950s actually had a decompression lever on them, which would be kind of nice if you want to spin this thing up without compression to build oil first. That'd be kind of cool. But there's an extra couple of steps on adjusting your valve, so, you know, your mileage may vary. Excuse you. That's painted green, so we'll put that on the outside. That looks like it belongs on the inside. That looks like an inside one. There's a bit of a shoulder on these nuts, so I'm facing them down. Okay, this will be number one. So tighten the main bolts up to 43 foot pounds and. Uh, 20 foot pounds only for the cap screws, which is the, the two little ones here. Okay, so this would be number one. This is where you shift down to five and six, but you gotta shift your torque down to 20 foot pounds. Fun fact, I've never calibrated this thing in my life since I bought it new. I always back it off when I'm done with it, so the spring will stay, I don't know, a little bit more accurate, but I'm sure it's off. <laughs> it hasn't been off enough for me to worry about, but I'm sure it's not quite right. After, I mean, I think I bought this thing in college, so early 2000s, and it's 2024, oh, 
Oh, crikey, this thing's like 20 years old. Ooh. Yeah, it should probably be calibrated. <laughs> now, let's see. Now, as I'm torquing this down, five and six here, uh, your engine will vary between the 850 and the 950 and the 1050. And even on the 1050s, I think they split up between an earlier and a late model. I think this thing is a later model. I can't remember. So obviously, go get a service manual and double check everything. Don't, don't rely on my numbers, right? Entertainment purposes only. And then we'll crank it back up to 43 and do the rest of the first set. So seven now. So please do do due diligence. I'm just, this is what it's like if you have to replace your cylinder liners in your 850, 950, and 1050 tractor, right? Seven. Just to give you guys a preview as to what I thought about just bashing this out. It's like, you know what? Some of the people might actually enjoy seeing how it's done. In case you want to tackle this project yourself. That's nine and ten. This is the last one for the... Uh... Ah! Well then. This is the last one for the uh, first... Or first torque sequence, I guess. Really? I gotta get rid of the shop lamp. It's just too stupid. Now that works. It cleans the threads up as it goes down. Relax. <laughs> no, didn't run a thread chaser in there, but that's all right. It's tight enough. It won't back out. That's how it's supposed to be, right? <laughs> okay. So, 43 foot-pounds. It's fine. Next sequence. 87 foot-pounds for the main bolts. Start on bolt one. Uh, one potato. No, 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 no. We're not doing that again. And then five and six are your cap bolts, and they say second stage for those is 40 foot pounds. Really? That's the worst light I've ever bought. And then back up to 87 foot pounds for the rest of the main bolts. Okay. Now, final sequence is a 116 to 130 foot pounds. Oh, this, oh, mine will go up to 150. Okay, well, uh, let's do 120. It's right in the middle of the road, eh? Oh, yeah. I love giving myself a hernia and putting cylinder head bolts back on. Excuse me, studs. Nuts? I'm not sure in this particular case. Uh, all right. okay. Five and six are our caps. Their final sequence is listed as 55 foot-pounds. I'll go back up to 120 for the rest of the main caps, or the rest of the main studs. Okay, we got it. We'll go. Okay. And then... I gotta put the valve train in. All right, well, that wasn't so bad, I guess. Other way, dum dum.
Now it's time. I think it's time we do adjust some valves. Book says to start with cylinder number one. So I guess we'll do that since we're here. Specs are, I think, six thousandths. I gotta go verify that. It is indeed six thousandths, and it does say to do it cold, not hot. So we can accommodate that. There. Why would it be too tight? It is too tight. No, of course. Really? There we go. Just a slight drag on the valve. Rocker arm, rather. Valve stem. Rocker arm. Yeah, that's good. Fortunately, this thing's not like a Cummins where you've got the, what, the A, B, C, and D timing marks, and you got to do the pairs of cylinders first and all that fun stuff. This is, this is a very simplistic engine, thank you. Very simplistic diesel, I should say. Thank goodness. Shut this thing up and running in no time. I guess if somebody was curious about how to adjust valves on this thing, it's like adjusting valves on any old engine, really. Your mounting hardware might be different, or your adjusting hardware might be different on the back end, but um, it's pretty much pretty much the same as any any car. So you got to remember that. Uh, oops. I gotta make sure these are not on the, uh, I gotta make sure this thing's on the compression stroke. AKA roll the cam over. Um, where's my... So we rotate engine. So these don't go up and down anymore. Which actually I could have done it right there, but that's all right. You pull the engine through again. Okay. Well, the engine at least feels good rotating over. Nothing's binding, so that's a good start. So that's coming up. Okay. So now both of those are actually uh, ready to be adjusted. Basically, you want these push rods down, right? Since this is a push rod engine. You want your valve or your rocker arms completely up so you're not on the lobe of the cam, right? Oof. Okay, there's contact there, there's contact there, and then get your feeler gauge, spec it out for your particular engine, adjust it so it's just a drag, and then adjust it. This thing's pretty gosh darn finicky, so it's going to take a couple of times. Six thousandths of an inch is not a lot to measure. So don't be surprised you gotta do this a few times. Oh, that's a slight drag. Um, when you're tightening them down, sometimes I actually will back it, the uh, adjusting screw just up. I mean, like a couple of hair widths, you know, just like less than a, like half a millimeter, and then I'll tighten them down, and that usually will get you pretty close. When you tighten, of course, your jam nut down of course the valve can or your adjusting uh your adjusting screw can move a little bit so but you can watch any old tutorial video on how to adjust your valves this will be pretty much be no different see that's too tight so we'll just back off here and then twist just 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 a little bit just a skosh i almost wish that these were Fine threads instead of look, they look like coarse threads. Fine threads that take you a little bit longer to make a difference, be a little bit less jumpy. There's a slight drag on there. I am satisfied with that. Make sure this is still top. Yep. Okay. Front cylinder, number three cylinder, technically, I guess. Per the manual. Okay, that should be good. All right, 
So we are truly bottomed out there. Yep. Tighten this up just so that it makes contact and back it off a little bit. And then measure. What do you measure? It's not enough, so I back it out. So there's a slight drag. There's a slight drag in that position. No, that's, I already feel that. It's not going to be good enough. Let's try that. Yeah. Yep, that'll work. That'll do donkey. That'll do. Right. Check that again. It's a tight six, but it's still a six. I like my sword. I don't like myself, of course, which is an eight and a half. Mm-hmm. What's he goobering on about again? I don't know. Right about there. That's a loose six. Loosey goosey. Validate. That's a loose. Yeah, it's pretty loose to be a six. It's more like six and a half. We're in the ballpark. So back that out, and then we'll twist this just a little bit. Now it's going to be too tight. Yep. Back it out again. There we go. There's a good drag on there. Just enough. Just enough. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Valve train is now within specs. Well, by golly gosh darn it. I think we might be able to put on a valve cover. <laughs> Weird. But before I do that, I'm gonna rotate this around just one more time, making sure the geometries. Oh, oh, she's hus she's huffing now. She got some compression. I don't see anything wrong here. I think we're good to go to put a valve cover on. Sure, why the heck not? I think that's why it was leaking a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit on the flat side. <laughs> uh. I should note, um, with your valve cover stud holes, these are just simple O-rings that are completely smushed, as well as putting new ones in. Just remember that these are metric O-rings and not standard. This oil fill cap, also the O-ring's pretty smushed. Although I think uh, my customer, he just puts it on the uh, where the dipstick is, it's just easier, but this is another uh, another point where it can leak, so. It's definitely gonna plug up my screen. <laughs> Ugh. That's, uh, that paste is congealing. It's just gonna, get, it's gonna plug up my uh, solvent tank. I'd rather plug up my solvent tank than the oil pump inside the actual tractor. The solvent's definitely reacting to it, that's for certain. It's looking a bit smarter now, for sure. Now, I do not have the gaskets for here and here. 
Uh, those did not come in the kit. I'll have to order those separately, but fortunately, all it is is the block off plate, and you can easily fix that later after we mount it on the tractor and have some hours on it, so I'm not terribly worried about those gaskets per se right now. Well, it looks a lot better. There's no more water in there, <laughs> or JB Weld sludge. <laughs> then, go over to here. Alright. As for the O-rings that go here, I just have a universal set. Now these are metric, so you want to make sure that you have metric <laughs> to go into the metric slot. I don't know. And I think it was this one. Now this kit looks like an R10. And for a few extra dollars, I'm sure you can go to the dealership and get them, but I have this whole kit right here, so hardly ever use this thing, but it's kind of nice. Don't have a standard set, though. I need to go get that one of these days. Fine, we'll put a little bit of Earl on here. Satisfy all of our beautiful keyboard warriors, yes? Ah, stay on there. I'm just going to hand tighten these. I'm sure there's a torque spec, but... Me grabbing this right here, I can't torque it down very hard. Just fine. You must do a lot of warranty claims. <laughs> eh, not really. Yep, that should be good. Sure, that's tool type. That's within specs. I think we need to work on some oil feed lines now. So these three right here are our oil feed lines. Let's make sure we got a clean mating surface here. Try not to gum up the works. As I already probably have. So putting your oil feed line on, you got a copper washer. It's going to go from here to the block and from here to the bolt. Let me show you. Instead of buying the correct washers, which probably would have been faster. I did get a universal kit because I'm tired of my metric cars, like our Volvo. These things go missing or banged up. I just want to have a supply on hand. If you do get a universal kit, make sure you measure these first against the OEM ones. Most of the ones I found, they were too skinny, not enough meat on here. Um, these ones, I actually measured it before buying it. They listed in the picture, and it was actually true to, and correct. So these will fit just like OEM. And yes, there are metric ones and then there are standard ones. So pay attention. <laughs> and it looks like they're brazed right here. So my advice is just kink it back here or you're not gonna do much damage. I could probably take it all off, but honestly, it was just faster just to... Yep. Just kind of tweaked a little bit. There we go, that should suffice. Okay, so we got one washer here. And the other washer is going to go on this side. So now they're all sandwiched up. And don't pinch your glove in there. <laughs> okay, that one started. Plus, you could probably save about 30 bucks by buying one of these universal kits anyways but this kit will allow me to use all new copper washers everywhere which in practically speaking you should in my opinion because these are original i'm sure and uh i'm sure they're well heat cycled and checked and worn out okay we, we have a fair bit of play here not a lot i'll have to check the back spacing here against the firewall we're not too worried about that for much. I want to clamp this down so I don't bust this brazing here. But uh, I think I will check for torque specs on these because you are dealing with copper washers here. So it's flexible enough. It should be all right. It's not rubbing up against the... You guys may not be able to see it. Where I... Oh, actually, I tell a lie. That might be rubbing a little bit. Might have to tweak it out ever so slightly. There you go. Just enough. That way it's not rubbing on each other. 
No, it's still. I don't remember tweaking it right there, but. May have to tweak it after the fact. Okay. I think I will go grab some torque specs for these things because I don't want to hurt myself with this. Don't want any leaks either. I thought I've, I tried finding the specs on it and I could not. Kind of peeves me, but oh well. So I'm just going to, yep, that's tight. And uh, yep, that feels too tight. Fortunately, it's around the outside, so if it's a little too loose, we can just tighten it up. Okay. Just enough force to clamp them down. Right. I think I'll go ahead and get these loosely mounted up because we're going to be knocking some dirt and stuff around. I do not want them getting in there. Do not dirt one getting into our fuel ports here. Really? Technically, this is output, but still, that output goes into your uh, injector itself. And I do not want to pull injectors on this thing. Not that it's hard, but I got enough stuff to do. Brother says he wants to get old Yeller over there. His 77 pickup going in possibly by next year. I'm going, hmm, okie dokie. I guess I'm starting to become under the gun. Still gonna take probably a year. I think we got funding to uh, take it into the uh, rebuilders now. He has opted to rebuild it, so it will be a number matching pickup. <laughs> For those of you who go gaga over such things, I don't, but whatever. Right in here, there's a big flat spot. Basically, his fuel lines are rubbing. And it's just gonna rub through, okay? Right here, okay, right here is where it's rubbing. So we're gonna have to make note of that and probably either tweak this line up so it doesn't continue rubbing because it's it's wearing through you can feel it it's definitely flat right there you can see it right there it's flat i might put down the shopping list for him in the future just in case since i have the book with me i can pull the part number i don't know if you can get these new but we got i can go around to some junkyards and find these fuel lines but to make note of that just something else to watch for when you're doing, you know, stuff like this. Especially working on diesel steel hard lines, you pay attention to their condition. Well, we won't tighten these up quite yet because I still have to bend these lines a little bit and get those fuel injection lines up. Now that's somewhat sealed. Let us clean up our exhaust ports. You know, instead of a colonoscopy uh, to clean up your exhaust ports, you can just go to Taco Bell for $5.99. I got a special going on. <laughs> I'm sorry. For those of you who don't get that joke, you're my sweet summer children, and Godspeed. If you do get that joke, well then have a good chuckle. Um, oh, oh no. No, 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 no. Is this another one of them, I gotta spend an hour and a half taking off a gasket? Oh, blessed be, yes it is. Oh, oh nothing but this, <laughs> nothing but disaster. What was, what was my slogan? Nothing but problems, yes. Nothing but problems, oh yeah. And of course, this is the steel one, so this could be fun. Oh yeah. I feel like never, another jam session is uh, coming on while we do a jump cut. So that's, no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 10-4 on that there, bud. This is going to take a hot minute, or rather, two minutes. <laughs> ah! Got closer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run all, um, it's 13 millimeter, really? Uh, ha. It's a freaking half inch. Uh, whatever. Got the mating surfaces cleaned up. Now I'm gonna run some, a thread chaser on all five of these studs. I don't worry about the sixth stud. So let me um, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up all of these threads here and I'll be right back yet again. Ooh, it's awful taut. These studs are not long for these world, this world, English much. Ooh, look at that black come off that. 
My studs. Yikes. Now with this stud here, I was due to how many heat cycles we did it, but actually it looks like it's going to walk out on its own. Thank goodness. I even bought easy outs for this, just in case if it didn't. Well, I guess, uh, guess we won't need it in this case. Whew! I will go buy a lot of tickets. I got one, one point two eight billion, some ridiculous amount now. Unbelievable. And of course, nothing fits like OEM, so we get an OEM stud. It's a lot better, I think. If I, I was at the dealership, I knew I broke. It's like you know what? Considering that there's two different threads on each side, that's unique enough. It's like oh, I'll pay the three dollars for this thing. Now these other studs are probably already sunk in there for a lifetime, so I don't know why I'm going to be never seizing this particular one, but no, oh well, whatever. Absolutely, this is the correct tool for the job. <laughs> well, I do declare, I think we're ready for an exhaust manifold. Come on. One for you, one for you, and one for you. And up to Daisy. I suppose it's better to do this without the muffler on. <laughs> In retrospect. And yes, no, we have some genuine John Deere nuts. <laughs> so, hey, those old ones were so cracked. I thought originally that was a washer, but no, it's like, no, that's that's just the nut there, dude. It's like, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get new mounting hardware. I'm starting in the center, working its way out, slowly tightening it up. That's loaded 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 up. Tool tight. Don't worry about knocking too much dust in here. This output to the muffler is not going to get sucked up in the turbo. It's just going to plug up your muffler. <laughs> All right. Now I can get my thread chaser up in here. Mm hmm. I think you only need like the first quarter inch, maybe third inch of actual threads. Now I'm not gonna put the mo on right now. I want to button up a few things. Let's go ahead and button up our fuel injector lines. Threads are actually very dirty. Clean them yet again. Okay, don't tighten these all the way up on your injectors. This is a mechanical diesel, mechanical fuel pump, or mechanical injection pump, which means they need to be purged of air. Eh, basically similar to any diesel, but we do this by cracking those lines, and then when we start it up, or rather crank it over, eventually we're gonna have <laughs> diesel squirting out of here, not violently. And then we'll be ready to tighten it up for the final time. I don't know what we can do about these lines not being bent. I mean, that's what the spacer's for. Unfortunately, I didn't buy one, and it's probably going to take another week to get here. No, honestly, I might just put some hose, like vacuum tubing or fuel injection or um, fuel hosing on there. Kind of hard to tweak up. Unless I can, actually, I might be able to manipulate it over here. Yeah, they're not rubbing now. I'll have to keep a weary eye out on that, though. I don't like that, but I think for now we got so they're just not touching. Kinked it right there a little bit. Yeah, that should be okay. Okay, oil return from the turbo. 
I'm going to take the old O-ring out and be done with it. It's getting a little flat. It was okay, but it probably would have worked for a while yet. We'll just go ahead and put a new one on there since we're here. So obviously, this is the boring, tedious work here. Before I, I think I'm just going to do a jump cut here in a second, but before you go, I'd like to show you uh, at least one very specific thing with this tractor I found. There's one thing I want you to check before you button everything up. Let me show you. Uh-oh, Popo's on patrol. Hello, Mr. Popo. Hey, I'm in my shop. I am in my shop, sir. Sir. I'm in my shop, just... Minding my own business, making stupid YouTube videos that no one will ever watch. Okay, everything's all right. So when you're doing this guys, please check this little guy right here. This is your tachometer drive. This one was halfway out. He was about ready to lose his tachometer drive. I mean, you plug it back in, screw it back in, that's fine. But um, to get in here with the belts and the shroud and the fan and everything, it's a right tight bugger to get in there. And it, it's pretty hard. So if you're in this far, just check that out, please. So pretty much, I'm going to button everything else up. Uh, every copper washer and o-ring that I find is just going to get replaced. That's just mundane stuff. And I'll do a jump cut and we're going to jump cut to where we're priming the fuel system and then hopefully be able to kick this thing over and hopefully I'll make some proper noise and um, we have no more fluid leaks. Or rather, the fluids hopefully will stay in their own compartments. Right. Okay, we now have a nice bypass hose. And now when you take this bugger out, this is the coolant temp sensor. On these tractors, if you're the owners, you already know, all these are is idiot lights. And for years, my customer has always wanted uh, an in-dash gauge. That's what we got them. And so I got a Thermal King. And all I simply did was grab a two and one sixteenth hole driller. You just put into uh, put into your drill, punch the hole right there, and installed it. And later, if we want, instead of these idiot lights, we can also put a oil pressure gauge right in here. There's enough room under the dash. I wrapped. It's a capillary tube. I just wrapped it in vacuum hose from there going to the dash just to protect it. <sighs> I really didn't want to feel like wiring anything in, so we're just going to kick this uh, pretty much old school and uh, just run an old capillary tube in there. So that's what that program is there. I'll go ahead and tidy that up. And then I think we're ready to put fluids in it and uh, prime the fuel system. We're getting close, folks. We're getting close. Oh. Oh, yeah, this torque to 80,000 foot pounds. Ah. Oh. oh. When's the last time this thing's been off? Holy guacamole, Batman. Oh. There it goes. Okay, I just uh, was binding up there a little bit. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Oh, my back can't handle this nonsense. I'm getting old, guys. Is it time to throw in the towel yet for this channel? I don't know. More gray matter? Oh, yeah. Hey, shh. I think we got a problem here. <laughs> uh, that's... That's just nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're gonna have to fix that. It's mostly drained out, but give it a little bit of a wash too. There we go. I'm not gonna be able to purge every single contaminated piece of oil out of here, but at least we can get the biggest chunks out. I'm hoping the rest will just dissolve and run this 
run this oil for a little while, then do another change here. I don't know, 10 hours a week, whatever it'll take. We'll just have to see what it looks like. I'll have to just tell the owner to monitor it constantly, at least for a few days. Maybe do another oil change just to flush it out, then run her hard. Should be good to go, hopefully, after that. Earl in here on the filter itself. Move that up a little bit. Zap that back on, bad boy, right back on there. And I'm not gonna reef this down hard, guys. Just calm down, just, just a little tight, there you go. Just a little above hand tight. Maybe only put five quarts in there and just run her at idle. Maybe, or just put around for a couple hours and then change it out again. About half, yeah, now nah, we'll, we'll top it off. We completely drained pretty much all of the oil lines and everything. Everything's drained, so. Head gasket's leaking. I don't know why, but it's just pouring out. Did I get a bad gasket or they gave me the wrong one? I'm gonna have to go search those serial numbers now. Dang it. Okay, so I figured out what's going on. Short answer, it's a cylinder head gasket. Now with these engines, there are two Style. There's an early style, and then there's a late style. Changeover, I think it was around 83 or 84. Serial numbers, 11,000 and down. Tractor serial number, 11,000 and down, and then 11,000 and up, apparently. I don't know where the split is. Well, actually, I do know where the split is with the engine. There's a serial number split, and it makes a difference. Early style versus late style. And for the head gasket, it's your engine serial number is eight thousand or eighty nine thousand and four hundred or something is the split for the engine serial. So that serial number and down eighty basically around eighty nine thousand and down you use one gasket, eighty nine thousand up serial number you use the newer type of gasket. And this engine serial number is around ninety seven. So I need to use the newer gasket. Now I'm I'm peeved right now at the dealership. I pulled it up on the public website and I found the serial number split difference why the the part specialist didn't catch it I don't know so we got the right one ordered up and it should be here in a few days so when you're ordering parts I should have done it like you do like an international tractor or a freight liner or you know whatever you know they all got different power plants Kenworth Peterbilt they all got different power plants and drive you need to order up what's under the hood per se and not what the VIN number says. For example, this is just to clarify if you run into this, I'm just forewarning you, pay attention here. Don't order your part numbers through your tractor serial number. You know, this would be like your VIN. Don't order it off of that number apparently, if your part specialist is a dum-dum. You want to refer to your engine serial number, which is a different number, which is on that placard. So we're gonna do a jump cut. I'm gonna pull this thing off and we'll compare and see if we can see a difference between the new old style gasket versus the new new style gasket, which hopefully here be in a couple of days. Maybe we can see a difference, I don't know. Um, it, it's very frustrating, it's very frustrating. So now don't get too mad at the dealership. I just went and got the other gaskets. I should have compared the two gaskets. I gave him the tractor number, VIN number, serial number. You think he would have caught the serial split difference. It should have showed in his computer because it shows up on the public website, on the public side, and it shows a difference. So half of it's his fault. I'll blame him half of that. I'll blame the other part on me. We have the original old gasket. That's prop probably from 1988, the original gasket. And we got that cheap aftermarket knockoff one. You know, I showed you didn't go up and down the studs very well. No, they are different by quite a lot. I should have compared the two, and I'll show you that here. So we can see right here, 
The new gasket, or rather the correct gasket, is the factory one, the original one. So what we're seeing here is the factory correct one that originally came off the tractor. And I assume this is from 88, 1988. And we got the junk aftermarket one, which I showed you doesn't slide up and down very well on the studs. Look at the difference. Yeah, there is a ring in there that's not supposed to be in there. So that gasket is not made incorrectly. So that's just wonderful. But yeah, there's a pretty big difference. I should have checked it. The parts guy should have checked closely at the notes for the serial numbers. So I think we're both a bit to blame. So don't go knocking the part specialist too hard. Half of it's my fault. I should have compared it. <sighs> oh well. Anyways, so I'm gonna tear all this down and we'll install the correct gasket. I thought about just doing a jump cut and hiding all this from you guys, but this is what sometimes happened and I'm human and I should have known that gasket didn't fit. I, I should have known better. I should have paid much more attention to it. I'm, I'll, I'll keep this in here, guys. I'll keep this honest for you. Um, I goofed up. Parts guy kind of goofed up. So, oh well, I should, I should have caught it. It's probably three quarters my fault. I should have caught it that that thing was not sitting on there correctly, but... We stop complaining and we move forward. Let's pull the new old style off and replace it with a new new style. And I should note, the newer style, about $70 more. It cost me $180, which is stupid. But it is correct this time, and it is still factory OEM, so it'll clamp on just fine. We'll be all right, guys. So just trying to keep it honest for you. This is one of those... This is one of those expedited, I'm going to try to keep everything halfway on so I don't have to undo the water pump and all that jazz and just yard this out here. All right. style remember the top one here the one you've seen right in front of you that's the old factory correct one the new one's still OEM but it's the wrong flavors the early style as you can see I get once again we have less meat here on the correct one and the incorrect one I got more meat here which one of the liners or I don't know rings whatever just fell off so um yeah now I gotta wait for another day and hopefully John Deere will send the right one this time. Be none the wiser. Fortunately, none of the water got in the cylinder bore. That's all right. I also did check uh, the part numbers for the O ring liners because I'm thinking, great. If there's a newer style, an older style of this uh, 3T90 engine, are. The liner rings different too, the sealant rings. I'm going, I got on there and fortunately it looks like it's not engine serial number Pacific. It's just model 850 is a little bit different than the 950 or the 850 and the 950 belong together, but the 1050 is a little bit different. It's just separated strictly by model number. Thank goodness. So at least I don't have to pull cylinder liners out again. Thank goodness. Probably a good idea if you Actually, if you're watching this, hopefully you're not going to do this wrong the first time, but probably check the counter bore just to make sure that the um, the protrusion on the uh, sleeves are still good. Um, that two, one to three thousandths of an inch, I think it's what it's specced out at. Just to make sure they didn't press it down too hard because that gasket added material to there. So um, that would have been first point of contact. Um, I'll probably check the offline, but I think it should be fine. I think we just simply end up crushing and ruining the gasket. Thank goodness. We'll be right back when we have the right, right gasket. Right. 177 freaking dollars later, we have another John Deere gasket. It's also a Yanmar gasket because it is indeed made in Japan. Now, before we even open this up, I want to get the original gasket. So I've had just about enough of this nonsense. And well, that's perfect. All right, okay. You tell me, Pete. You tell me. There's 
seventy dollar difference. Can you guys see the seventy dollar difference? I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Now let me know that's the right one. Yeah. Should have compared the first one. I'm kicking myself. I'm not charging the customer. I'll eat. I'll eat the money on the uh, the wrong gasket that was ordered. I feel that's only proper. Let it be a lesson to myself. Got some oil on the deck just to keep everything from rusting out because it took a couple of more days. So I'm gonna wash it all down with brake cleaner here. Okay, this one is marked top, of course. This one does fit reasonably well, as it should for 170 to seven flipping dollars. Still a bit on the tot side. Nowhere near as bad as the aftermarket one, though. That's for dang on sure. Oh, please, come on. Oh, please. Don't be such a poo poo head. There we go. There we go. Right. Oh, look at that. That gasket actually conforms around the uh, liner this time. Huh. Apparently, that's a thing. <laughs> right. I'm going to reassemble this thing. We'll catch you when we're refilling the coolant again. Hashtag nothing but problems. Okay, everything's all been reassembled yet again. I'll try this for the umpteenth time. Actually, this is on the second try. Let's see if we get any radiator leaks now. I think I got everything buttoned up. Find out here in a minute. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Well, as far as we got, and uh, I don't see anything running along the firewall, and it's still gurgling, so that's a good sign. Gurgle, gurgle. Let's see. I don't remember where. I don't, I don't remember if I left off the concentrate or the water or if it's a 50 50 in there. Ouch. Um, I don't know. A little bit of water, a little bit more water, a little bit more coolant, I guess. Keep, try to keep it 50 50. Things are still trickling. This is good. This pleases me. Okay, the radiator's still got stuff on the top. We're about there on the level, so we're pretty good to go there. It does appear to does not the water does not appear to be going anywhere this time. That is good. Next thing we're gonna do prime the fuel system since this is a mechanical diesel. We want to see keep these lines cracked. We want to see fuel squirt out from all of your cylinders. I can see it from here. I'm just trying to help visualize it for you guys. And hopefully with the right head gasket, this thing should just pop right off, I would imagine. Okay. Looking for a lot of moisture. A lot of moisture, right? Okay. Oh, dum dum, you had to turn the throttle up. We're getting fuel. What's going on here? Maybe I had the fuel valve off. I don't know. Oh, there we go. There we go. Dum Dum had the fuel va valve off on the filter. Oh lord! That scared me for a second. And I turned. He's trying to turn the engine the correct way. I don't want to spin it backwards in case it damage the injection pump. That was my next fear, but looks like some idiot just forgot to turn the fuel on. That's nice. Okay. Okay. 
Yes, please ignore the fact that I'm using a standard wrench, not a metric flare wrench. Shh, it'll be okay. All right? Again. Really? All right, I think it's about time we light some fire in it and hopefully something will happen. Tankerous little beast, you. <sighs> Look at that, no fuel again. running out on this thing. Well, I guess I'll leave it over on the charger overnight, I guess. <laughs> Starting to get a few more spritz out of here, but that battery's gone flat. Gosh dang it. I did test it. The customer did complain. It was cranking over slowly. Yeah. So we have to postpone this for 24 hours while I get this plugged in. Try it again tomorrow, I guess. Right, so next day, battery is sitting at 13.4 volts. I test the cold cranking apps. It says it's good about 800, but that's because there's a surface charge on there. It may or may not go. So let's go ahead and try bleeding our screw or bleeding our fuel injector lines again. And we've got steady stream out of this one and this one. This one's Gurgling pretty good, so let's go ahead and see if that worked. Could be that battery loads because his alternator may not be charging. I'm gonna have to look into that. I don't have time to fix it right now, but fortunately, this is a mechanical and mechanical engine, so you don't need it to run it. You just need it. To, you just need electricity to start it. Is all. All right. Let's try to crank it up again. Now come on. Idle. It wasn't shut off on its own. 
may have to adjust the linkage, I'm not sure. I don't know why that idle, it won't idle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to adjust that. Let me adjust this idle and this thing can just, just let this thing idle and hopefully find itself when it comes up to temperature. Looking at the oil uh, feed lines, I don't see them leaking. Looks like my copper, brand new copper gaskets are holding out. No dripping. Eh, it's kind of moist. I'll have to keep an eye on that. I didn't see any initial dripping of the diesel there. But uh, so far so good. Sounding good enough. I could have been just a purging of the air because so I got everything lined up and everything torqued back. None of the fuel lines seem to be leaking. I don't see any coolant leaking. Now between the uh, cylinder block and the cylinder head. That looks all right. Uh, wheel feed lines look good. Those plugs look good. Everything looks dry. All right. Let me adjust that. Uh, let me adjust that throttle linkage. We'll be right back. That sounds better. However, our adjusting rod is almost completely out. Oh, and we finally got some diesel leaks. All right. All right, well, I'll uh, tighten those up and I'll be right back. Okay, well, after several minutes of tidying up those fittings and bleeding the air out yet again, be running all right. This one is good. I'm pro probably just sit fat, dumb, and happy and wait for this thing to warm up. Twelve point nine volts. The battery is not charging, or rather, the alternator is not charging the battery. Well, definitely sounds good. No leak on the injection lines. Made sure that the oil feed tubes or oil feed tube up the cylinder is not rubbing on anything. Even check on the back of the firewall. That looks good. Enter well, not intercooler, but your intake hose is back on. However, the uh, reservoir for the coolant is. Um, DOA, or rather it's SOL. See how it's nice and hard right here? You can squish that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this coolant jug is done. It's not gonna hold, it's not gonna hold any fluid whatsoever. It was actually leaking a little bit. So, I have to either get what I used one on eBay or go to the dealership, one of which. Battery's not charging, revved it up just to see if I need to excite it a little bit. And um, I still only got 12.9 volts out of it. So no, that alternator's not putting out whatsoever. However, this is a mechanical diesel. You only need it to start. So I'll just tell my customer, he's mechanically inclined enough. He can pull it off and take it to our mom and pop shop and have them uh, put it on the bench and see what uh, see what the deal is there. I uh, got to uh, put up some zip ties. So last minute buttoning up and go and put it around out in the field a little bit and open it up a little bit and make sure it behaves itself. And the coolant is Still at the top. I need to pressurize it, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that now. And it looks like probably has a 160 thermostat. 
because it's just above the 150. Uh, it's just barely in the green mark. Really for engines, you need them to be at least about 180 degrees to boil all the moisture out of the engine. And <laughs> you saw by the oil, it has a mahoosive amount of moisture still that needs to get rid of. So let me do some more buttoning up and uh, we'll go have a little putt-putt with it. Well, this was the first major repair tractor video for this channel, and I hope you like it. If you want more, uh, let me know. Uh, prices on tractors sometimes is not cheap, and they're very labor intensive. Um, like I said before, I got a Ford 3000 with a stuck diesel engine, seized engine. I got a 59 case DC, and an Alice Chalmers. I can't remember the model name that needs a tune-up. Uh, the 59 case DC. I think that's got a frozen engine too. <laughs> so none of it's gonna be cheap. It's gonna be very long and intensive content possibly, but if you want more, just let me know. I don't know why I can get around to the next ones. Maybe we can do the Alice Chalmers maybe this summer. It needs a tune up really bad. This thing needs a lot of love and it's got 8,000 hours on it and it's uh, it's got some war scars on it, but I think it'll survive for uh, several thousand hours yet. <laughs> Welcome Thank to all the new subscribers. Looking forward to putting out more content for you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys later. I'm happy. I'm happy that this project's over. Now I can go to fixing more stuff. Oh, goody. <laughs>what shall we make a mess of next? I'm gonna loosen up our alternator bracket. That's part of the screen part here's part of the side again. Dog got her anyway, she can't see that I didn't try. I another one to the other one and drink my baby goodbye. <laughs> Kaiser, Kaiser, synthesizer, slimy bottles, all out.
I'm sitting on the bar stool. I quit the concern for that's what I'm gonna do today. You'll answer a Disconnect the. Whoa. Whoa. Not bump the camera! Stop bumping the camera! They call me the fireman. That's my name. Fireman of the town. Oh, now it's famous. There will be a bearing that comes with it. I just grabbed some oil. Just any old oil. That's how you uh, break stuff. And you're just roughing this in. Don't worry about aligning stuff too much. I'm just roughing it. really roughing it in. Like I said, very cheap pour. Oh boy, I'm gonna get Let's do number one next. Oh, I gotta rotate my crankshaft. Ah, I got stuck. That right, pulling towards me. I think. No, other way. I don't even know which way I'm going. Wunderbar. Remember when I pulled the eggs? Um, okay, see now. Just remember that these are metric O-rings. Oops. I don't want too much oil getting into the uh, coolant system. <laughs> we already done enough of that. Uh, Suspect that's why some uh, putting rocker covers back on. Rocker, rocker, whatever. Of course, observe the beautiful cover now that I. Oh, <laughs> that's right. I took you guys with me when I did that. Never mind. We'll see you guys. Like everything. Smack. Oh, oh, oh. Right. So we'll see everything. We'll see. You. Radiator cap. Well, a first major. Wow. I think you're really listening. Don't they know it's the end of the world? Oh, I suppose I'd rotate the engine over, eh? <laughs> oh. You were such an idiot! Nobody messes with McSqueezy. Mmm.